everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another locomotive review. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favourite classes of all time and come on, you've got to love this. It's the West Country class and this is Hornby's brand new, well, brand new, West Country class locomotive and this one is Camelford in BR Green as you can see. And I don't know if you remember, you probably will, it was just a few weeks ago, I looked at one very similar to this. Uh, which was, what was it, Tangmere from the Excalibur train pack and it's, uh, it's over there on one of the shelves someplace and the original plan for this video was I was going to compare the two Tangmere is, uh, you know, a 20 year old tooling, well it's not, it's about 16 years old I think it came out in 2001 and uh, so I was going to compare that to this one which is Hornby's brand new 2017 model uh, which is, uh, you know, super expensive but presumably super detailed that was the plan <laughs> Well, that is not going to happen anymore because uh, despite the uh, very high price of this model, £165 on Hornby's website, it is absolutely identical to the original Tangmere model that I've got. Uh, it's the exact same tooling, there are a few very minor changes, well downgrades, there's one major downgrade uh, which uh, we'll talk about later on. So yeah, um, very confused to be honest, I really did think that Hornby for that kind of money would have retooled this and uh, given it maybe a cast metal body or something like that, but unfortunately not, so that isn't something we're going to be able to do. Well, I could compare them, but it wouldn't be all that interesting because uh, they are the same. A few small differences which we'll talk about later, but essentially they are the same. So I decided to do a little bit of digging, I uh, looked into how much this cost back in 2001 when it first came out, and the price was £95 or thereabouts, so uh, I'll let that sink in just for a second. Now I'm going to be fair, of course there has been a degree of inflation since 2001, and £95 back then isn't £95 today. So I calculated it, and I worked out the price difference in today's money, and when it first came out it was £20 cheaper than it is now. And uh, most people would say to that, well, yeah, but production costs have gone up quite a lot. You have to pay the Chinese labour force a lot more now, and, you know, generally things are more expensive to produce. And, okay, that's fine, I accept that. But the thing is, when this first came out, back in 2001, it was a brand new tooling. And uh, toolings, I don't know if you know, cost a ridiculous amount of money, tens of thousands of pounds. Uh, I think these days they've cost £100,000 and more. So super, super expensive. And for a model, for a company like Hornby, that is a massive outlay to have to make. Well, in 2017, Hornby haven't had to make that outlay for this because the tooling is already there. It's been there since 2001. And back in 2001, they had had to make that, uh, you know, that investment to have that tooling produced. And yet they still managed to pull it off £20 cheaper than they are doing today. Also, while this is a well-detailed model, the detail on this is fantastic, I've got to admit. It isn't quite up to modern standards. You know, there are a lot better models out there. For example... We've got uh, the B12, Hornby's B12, this is £5 cheaper, and in my opinion the detail on this is a lot better. It's got uh, a cast metal body and it is superb. Um, I got this from Rails of Sheffield, and uh, this I didn't pay the Hornby price for, believe me. I paid £120 for this, so better, not absolutely perfect, so I thought I would show you something similar. Um, I also bought the King Class from Rails of Sheffield, but this was £10 cheaper and uh, 110 pounds, just I think it was 109 pounds actually. And in my opinion, this is one of the most detailed models I've ever seen. And of course, it's also got the digital sound on board. So truly, how Hornby can justify the 165 pounds for this, I, I really don't know, I really don't know. And you know, as I say, this model, while it is still fantastic, the detail on it is a little bit dated, especially the cab detail, and the cab is how I sort of first went, hang on, is, is this the old version? Because the cab, for me, doesn't look too realistic on this. And so, yeah, uh, that's the thing. Uh, I don't really know how they can justify the price, but that is just one man's opinion. So if you have any thoughts on this, I would be very glad to hear them. And if I'm wrong, pl please tell me, because uh, I am wrong sometimes, you know. It's just an opinion, well, that's all it is. So we're going to be looking at this today. I'm going to be unboxing it, and I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on it. And I am being honest, and I know I am being harsh as well, but um, that's my opinion, and I don't think I should hide it, and I've got no reason to. So we're going to look at this today. Like I say, it is one of my favourite classes of locomotive, and don't get me wrong, I love the model, I just wish it wasn't uh, priced the way it was. I think that's the bottom line, and I know I'm a little bit tight sounding, aren't I? But uh, I just feel, you know, I love Hornby, I love this hobby, and if people are getting ripped off, surely it's going to be putting them off the hobby, and that is something that none of us want if we want this hobby to survive. So let's have a look at this then, uh, the beautiful West Country class. 
So I think we'll start by having a look at the box then, shall we? So as you can see on the end of the box, this is R3445 BR462 West Country Class 34032. That's the running number and Camelford, of course, which is the name. So that tells you basically all you need to know about the locomotive. And on the back, as you can see, we have 7P6F. Uh, that's the classification. And of course, they were mixed traffic locomotives, which is why you've got two on there. And then in the middle here, you've got a whole wealth of information about the class, uh, which uh, you can pause and uh, read if you'd like to. And then, of course, my favourite part of the packaging, which shows the original drawings um, for the model. And uh, yep, yeah, sure. Sure enough, this was dated 2001, which uh, tells you uh, all you need to know. Okay, let's get this back up the right way around then, and uh, let's start getting this out. I must say, it is nice to finally have one of these in the block of ice packaging, and uh, yeah, I think that does a great job of protecting them. As you can see, it's uh, just about see it in there. Right, let's get this out then. And the first thing to look at is the instructions, which is stuck to the block of ice. So here we are then, this is the operating and maintenance instructions for the West Country slash Battle of Britain class. And of course the two classes are basically the same. And there you have it inside, that's all of the usual stuff. Now, the one thing I want you to pay attention to here is body removal. As you can see, um, pay attention to the fact that you can see there is a screw here, uh, illustrated on the instructions which came with the locomotive. Uh, I won't give anything away on that now, but just uh, bear it in mind for later on. Okay, I'll put that to one side. All right then, let's get this out. Right, and we have a detail pack, which again uh, is a little bit like the Q1 detail pack. It does have the shovels and uh, all of the tools for the firemen there, which is a wonderful inclusion, I think. It's even got Bill and Ben look, so you can put uh, your figures into the cab. That is a good thing. That's a very, very nice thing for them to include. They're not painted, but part of the fun, I suppose, will be painting those if you wanted to include them. You've also got the head code discs, which is, an, again, a very nice inclusion, and also a separately painted uh, vacuum pipe, and also all of the brake rigging and spare couplings for the front and chain link couplings. Yep, yeah, it's a very, very good detail pack. That much, I will admit, because uh, you can't deny that. Uh, so, very, very good. Okay, let's get the model out then. I'm just going to very carefully unclip this from the packaging. Now, this isn't the first time it came out of the packaging. Um, I have had it out before, of course. Uh, I, I think I've even run it before, haven't I? So yeah, obviously it's been out of the packaging for the first time and I'm gonna very gingerly lift this out. And uh, yes, there is one particularly nasty gripe I've got with this model. And uh, that sort of stems from my first moments spent alone with it. Because when I first lifted it out of the packaging, the loco body actually came away from the chassis and I was just left holding the tender and an empty body shell. So let me just demonstrate this um, because I can cause it to happen again. And I admit that since I've put the body back on, it has been a lot more secure. But uh, this is what I talk about. Um, as you can see, there is no longer a screw which holds the body on. But as you can see, the body is just uh, clipped into place, which, uh, and I can't begin to say what a ridiculous idea that is. When these things can cost up to £165 to buy, you really need more than a flimsy clip to be holding the body on, because, you know, if this was, you know, if I was holding this way up in the, in the air, and that body happened to come off, I would be left holding nothing but the tender, and I would drop it. I'm fairly sure I would have dropped it. And I was very lucky not to have dropped it when this happened for the first time. Now, yeah, I admit, like I say, this body has been a, a lot more securely attached since I uh, reattached it. But that's not really the point. I mean, you can't unscrew a screw by accident, but you could probably pull this body off by accident. And who knows, 50 years down the line, if this model survives 50 years down the line, that clip may not be as effective as it is now. And another thing, once this body's off, you really can see how simple it is. It really is just a, a flimsy bit of plastic. Um, so yeah, uh, again, the price, but uh, let's not talk about the price anymore. So I'm going to get this body put back onto the model and I'll talk to you again in just a sec. Okay, there we go. I'm going to lift that back up. So yeah, I mean, we're always told, aren't we, you're not to hold the locomotive by the wheels or by the rods or, you know, anything like that. And uh, being that that is the case, to make a body that isn't completely secure is a ridiculous design feature. And I, I really would love to meet the chap who uh, made that decision. I mean, how much more profit can they have squeezed out of this model by saying that, uh, you know, somebody in the factory hasn't got to mess about with the screw anymore to hold this on? I think it, that is stupid. And the screw is still there, even look, they've still had to use the screw, it's just that that screw is attached to the clip, which just clips the body on. So, yeah, uh, 
crazy. I don't understand that at all. Anyway, I'm going to give you a little bit of history on the West Country class now, and also a few shout outs. So here we go. So hello to Speedy Steam 55, Jam Rail Vids, and Speedline Railway Trains. Thank you very, very much for getting in touch, and I hope you guys especially love the video. So the West Country class was introduced in 1945 by Oliver Bullard, and the West Country and the Battle of Britain classes were mixed traffic locomotives, collectively known as Light Pacifics. The two classes were identical, and they resembled a lighter version of the very successful but slightly earlier Merchant Navy class, which enabled them to cover a better variety of routes. The first batch was known as the West Country and the remaining 70 or so were known as Battle of Britons. The class became quite well known for its unusual look, partly due to the air smoothed casing which gives it that very unusual shape. The casing had several purposes, first of all to make cleaning easier so the loco could just be washed like a coach would be, and also to draw smoke up and away from the cab. The casing was not intended for streamlining though, which is a common misconception. During the early 1950s, 60 of the class were rebuilt by British Railways and the product closely resembled the Merchant Navy class, featuring no air smooth casing, wool shirts valve gear and a lower boiler pressure. In total, 10 of the class remain in preservation and the remainder, quite sadly, were scrapped. Okay, so there she is then, uh, 34032 Camelford, the very beautiful West Country class up against the white background for you. Now, before I start talking about the detail, I thought I would give you a little bit of an update slash correction on the issue I had with the clip, which was holding the loco body on. Now, what I said was true, it is actually relying on that clip to hold the body on. Now, actually, the instructions were right, I have to confess. There is actually a screw, which we saw a second ago, which goes through the chassis, but rather than screw into the body it screws into what is more like an adapter this plastic adapter and that plastic adapter then clips onto the body and I think what should have been done is that adapter should have been glued onto the body not just clipped on and my Tangemere version from 2001 does have an adapter like that but the clip is new my Tangemere does not have a clip like that and it is very very securely attached to the body so I think with this uh, 2017 model that could and should have been glued on really and in fact as soon as I finish filming this I'm going to glue that adapter onto the body because I do not want to have an accident uh, which involves this thing clattering onto the ground that would not be good and really for this kind of thing to be passing Hornby's quality control I mean if I spotted this I spotted this issue within seconds of this being out of the box it should have been picked up by Hornby before these models went out but uh, as per usual um, it wasn't picked up and uh, that is something that I personally have come to expect Again, I'm not trying to get on Hornby's back today, but sometimes that kind of happens. And I'm not just saying that, I've proved to you that that is a problem with this model. Right, let's move on to the detail then. And the model is very, very lovely. And something that could be new with this model is the livery. I can't recall seeing one in quite this beautiful livery before. So as you can see, it is in the BR Green, which has these gorgeous orange bands going the whole length of the locomotive. You've got two of them one just above where the running board would be and one higher up near the top. But they are very beautifully applied and I really can't fault the way that those have been done. That is absolutely gorgeous. On the side of the cab you have the classification and the 5FA I think that says, just above the running number there, which again very nicely applied is that uh, 34032. You've got the Camelford nameplate which is separately fitted, that isn't just part of the body, which uh, is a very very nice touch of course. And then you've got this tiny little thing down here which actually what I'll have to do is zoom in and take a shot of that up close and then I'll be able to read what it says but uh, right back here behind the camera I'm too far away from that unfortunately to be able to see what it says now let's talk about the separately fitted parts and this is where it gets quite interesting because if we look upon the roof as you can see the safety valves here right are down in front of the whistle and what I found is that this tooling was very cleverly designed to have a few different variations built into it so I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side shot of my Tangemere um, Battle of Britain class, which is a Battle of Britain, whereas this is a West Country. But as you can see, the safety valves are actually back here on this separately fitted piece at the back. So uh, yeah, those two pieces are designed to be interchangeable, it looks like, so that different parts can be fitted to suit different models. Um, I'm not sure whether that is a difference between the West Countries and the Battle of Britons, or whether that was due to modifications which might have happened over time. Obviously, my Tangemere is modelled a lot later on than this one, which uh, has the early crest, as you can see. Another thing similar to that is the uh, sort of chimney area. As you can see, Tangemere's chimney top is a little bit different to this one. Um, I'm not sure how you describe the difference, but once again, it seems that this 
whole section is designed to be interchanged, which is very clever, so there are variations of the model out there which are quite interesting to see. Apart from that, the separately fitted work is just the same as it was on my Tangmere, so I'm not going to spend too long on that. But I will just highlight the fact that the pipe work, for example, is very impressive and it is separately painted, which is nice to see. You've also got the separately fitted lamps, which are on the front there, and uh, once again, it's quite nice to see those actually fitted and uh, picked out with paint. You've got the usual nice features of a modern locomotive, which, considering that this is quite an old tooling, it is nice to see. But yep, yeah, sprung buffers, as you can tell there. Yep, yeah, and you've also got the glazed windows in the cabs there, which uh, again is a bit of a given for a modern locomotive, but uh, that's fair enough. And again, you do have a painted cab, but like I said earlier, I do feel that that is a little bit uh, on the dated side now. Uh, there are much better cabs than that out there these days, but it's a fairly enclosed cab, so it's not a massive deal. Now, the tender is a little bit different on this one. It isn't sort of, well, I don't know, is it the, the classic bullied tender? But uh, Tangmere's tender was the rebuilt tender, and I don't know that this one is. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but it is different nonetheless. But as you can see, you've got the early British Railways crest uh, very nicely applied onto the side there. And of course, you've got those sort of double orange bands, which also carry over onto the tender very nicely. The coal is fairly nice looking. It's not as fine scale as some of them, but it is good and realistic. So, uh, you know, for me, that is fair enough. And it looks to me as though it is removable as well, which is quite a nice touch. And around the back, you've got the usual detail of the separately fitted lamp irons again, which is quite nice to see, I think. Um, you don't get all that many models with uh, separately fitted lamps. And of course, separately fitted ladders as well, which uh, do look superb on the back there. Although you've got to be careful not to catch them, of course, because uh, they are a little bit uh, fragile. But that's okay. You have to expect to be careful with these things anyway. So that's a little overview. If you'd like to see me review this in more detail, do check out my Tangmere or Excalibur Express train pack video, because I went over it in considerably more detail there. But uh, because I know a lot of you people will have seen that already. I'm not going to bore you all with it uh, today. So let's move on then to performance and uh, see how this one runs, shall we? Okay, so there's Camelford then looking very, very lovely down onto the track, as you can tell. And she's about to be coupling up to these Maunsell coaches, which I think just suit her quite nicely, personally. But uh, for now then, let's try a little bit of slow speed and see how she does. Now, she has been fully run in, and uh, she's also she's even been in another video of mine, hasn't she? So I'm fairly sure that she's uh, at her peak, let's say. So uh, let's give her a little bit of juice. Is she moving? Yeah, she's moving. It's a very, very slightly jumpy at this speed. <laughs> Don't know what happened there. But uh, generally, it is pretty good. I mean, that is a fair slow speed, isn't it? I've never seen a jump like that, actually. See if that happens again. So that was very bizarre, actually, wasn't it? Sort of cut out. And... But no, that's. I think that's acceptable, isn't it? One observation I have made, though, is that she's quite a bit noisier than uh, Tangmere. In fact, let me grab Tangmere. One sec. Here she is. And uh, Tangmere is going to be running today, by the way. Um, she's going to be. She's got some coaches that she's going to run with in a second. But uh, I'm just going to run Tangmere past you, and I've deliberately turned off the uh, the wind turbine and the crane and such, so that you can just hear the loco noise. So let's run Tangmere past you. Take her back. Ready? There we go. As you can hear, very little motor noise at all. Uh, there's a little bit of squeaking actually coming from the tender, but that's my fault for not servicing her. But now listen to this. Considerably noisier, isn't it? If we listen to Tandemir again. Take the tender off, because the tender's making some noise. Ooh, <laughs> nearly died on the points there, because the tender's been taken off. But you see what I mean? way noisier isn't it i mean it's not a complaint because she still runs very nice and smoothly but uh, yeah it's uh, i don't know whether they're using a different motor these days that isn't as good i mean i can't i can't say that because i can't prove it um you know just saying it's a bit noisy isn't proof enough of that but uh, yeah it's a little bit unusual that it should be noisier but again not a complaint i don't mind a bit of loco noise just an observation anyway let's send her to her coaches then which way is she going and uh, see how well she pulls them Nice and steadily does it for the coupling. Oh, it is nice to have a loco that's controllable enough to do such a nice gentle coupling as that though, isn't it? So, let me just get her in focus. 
There we go, might as well turn the exposure up a touch for you. Okay, there we go then. She's coupled to a nice rake of coaches, and there's six there, so that's, I think, a fair test of her ability. That's quite a lot of coaches. Okay, let's get her started then. No, come on, let's go forwards. And hopefully she'll manage these. Which demonstrates that she's actually a very good puller. That is absolutely true. And she looks superb with southern coaches, as you can tell. Absolutely gorgeous. And on the middle line we have of course Tanjmir and she's pulling some blood and custard coaches. And I should also point out that uh, Tanjmir has had a lot of hammer in the past. I've had to strip her down to her bare parts. I've even had the wheels off the axles to fix the, the gear problem that she had. So she's not had the easiest life and yet she still runs so quietly and beautifully. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, superb there with some blood and custard coaches, which uh, I don't often run with Southern Locos, so I thought that would be a nice change. And on the very inside line, she's just coming around now, we have the rebuilt Merchant Navy class. This one is Canadian Pacific in the lovely BR Blue, and she's got some Pullman coaches because I think those suited her the best. So, see which other bullet Pacifics you can spot out on the line. I know that is difficult because some of their numbers and nameplates are very tiny, but uh, extra points to anybody who can name them all. Okay, I'll let uh, old Camelford go past once more, and uh, then I'll get some shots from around the room. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. Oh yes. And please don't anybody get me wrong on this. I think it's an absolutely beautiful model and uh, on balance I am very happy with it. Uh, I just think there are certain things about it and also certain things about the way that it's been sold which are a little bit dodgy. And I think I've demonstrated that today. That's not just something I'm saying. I think I've gone into fair detail as to why I think that. But all in all, it's a very, very good model, and uh, the bottom line is, I'm happy with it, but uh, I think things could have been different, and Hornby could have done a few things to make it a bit of a better purchase. That's all. Ooh, look at that. Now, that is beautiful. I know that Hornby have released a new Merchant Navy, or they might still yet to be released a new Merchant Navy, so I don't know whether that one's going to be a new tooling. Obviously, I hope so, but <laughs> I'm not too sure now, after what I've seen. Blimey, just look at that. I, I hope you can see why it's one of my favourite classes. I think that's part of the problem, I'm so passionate about them. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit more outspoken with these, but uh, yeah. I do absolutely love them, they're, they're just great, aren't they? And they've just got such an unusual look to them as well. I don't know, maybe I'm a bit of a weirdo. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they've, uh, they've just always appealed to me, just like the Q1s have as well. Here we are with my ratings then for the very, very lovely Hornby West Country class. Detail, I've given this one 8 out of 10, and I know I gave Tanjmir a 9, but Tanjmir was in a train pack, and the coaches that came with her were absolutely exquisite, so she got an extra mark for that. However, I've given this one 8 out of 10. I think the detail is still excellent, don't get me wrong, but I think these days Hornby are producing better, specifically the B12 and the King class, things that I mentioned earlier on. Performance, 8 out of 10. I've given this same as Tanjmir, although I didn't have to take this one apart to fix the gears and whatnot. It is a little bit on the noisy side, and that hasn't really seemed to go away with running in. So, 8 out of 10 there. Still a very good score. Character, 10 out of 10. I still think these models are absolutely gorgeous, and I will never say anything other than that. So, 10 out of 10 there. Build quality, 8 out of 10. Generally, it is a very nicely built and uh, very sturdily built model. However, the fact that the body was so easily able to just drop off this model is a serious build quality issue, in my opinion, and it's something that I've now fixed. I've put a little bit of glue on there, so it's okay now, but if I'd have dropped that because of it, that would have been, uh, you know, a serious issue. And I think if you told a shop like Rails of Sheffield or Hattons that you dropped a model, they might not be all that uh, lenient with you in replacing it, so, mm. Value then, £120 wasn't absolutely terrible for this, but it was £10 more than my Tangmere cost, 
and my Tanjmir came with three absolutely gorgeous coaches. So I've given it six out of ten there, not fantastic value really. And certainly for £165, that really isn't very good value. But I didn't pay that, so I won't give it uh, terrible marks there. Overall then, 8.18 out of 10, a fair score that ranks her, let's see, 40th, just above Edward and below Arian Burt. Of course, I think she's a better model than Arian Burt, but the price really does detract, I think. Right, does anybody fancy a train ride? Thought that might lighten the mood a little bit. Who would you like to ride on? I think we'll let you go on Tanjmir's train, shall we? All right, let's do it. Okay then everybody, well that is just going to about do it for today. I do hope you enjoyed the video and of course please feel free to let me know what you think about some of the issues discussed today and if you think I've been wrong about anything please let me know. Obviously this shouldn't be just a space where I dictate what I think is right and everybody agrees with me. I think this should be a place for discussion and uh, yeah a place for debate so if you've got any thoughts on it please do let me know um, and also if you think I am right also please feel free to let me know because I would like to know if, uh, if you guys think I'm miles off and equally if you guys think uh, I'm on the money so uh, let me know what you think about that and also let me know what you think about the model I think it's fantastic and I always have done I've always liked Tangmere but um, yes, hopefully you understand uh, my stance on this particular model. Anyway, that's just about it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all again very, very soon. Cheers, everybody.